Hi, I'm Charlie, and this is an FPP short. Today we're going to be installing Falcon Pi Player on a Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, this works with any type of Raspberry Pi out there, pretty much. Uh, you will also need a micro SD card. This one is 16 gigabytes. Um, really, anything between 8 and 32 would work just fine. I do not suggest going over 32 gigabytes. So let's get going here. Uh, first thing you're going to need to do is download the FPP image to burn to the SD card. So we're going to go to Google and we are going to search FPP space GitHub. And the first result that you should get is for GitHub Falcon Christmas forward slash FPP. We're going to click on that. And over on the right hand side here, uh, we're going to notice where it says releases and the latest release. We're going to want to click on that one. Uh, today it is 6.0. And if we scroll towards the bottom, we're looking for assets here. And actually selecting an image for Raspberry Pis, um, Pi Bs, B Pluses, 3, 3, 3 Plus, 4, Pi Zeros, use this image. So that's the image that we're going to look for down below. If you're using a Beagle Bone, you're going to want to use that image, the BBB image. So here is the image here. And I've already downloaded this, but this is going to download a zip folder. Um, since I've already downloaded it, I'm going to hit cancel, or you would want to hit save. Uh, just go to a place where you're going to remember where to save it. And we're going to let that download. It's going to take a few minutes to download. It is a rather big file. Um, the next thing we need is a way to image our SD card. A lot of people use Bolina Etcher. And there's a lot of other ones out there as well. Etcher's free, it's easy, and a lot of people use it. So we are going to Google Etcher and or Balena Etcher, B-A-L-E-N-A. -E and it sh a result should pop up to bring us to Balena.io forward slash Etcher. We're going to download that for our operating system that we're working on currently. I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm going to download it for that. If you're on a Mac, you would select the Mac OS version. Um, I've already downloaded this as well, uh, but once you download it, it's, it's going to ask you where do you want to save it, and then it's also going to ask you to, um, or once you download it, you're going to have to install it as well. Once it's installed, you're going to end up with a screen like this. We'll click remove here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flash from file. And we are going to navigate and find where we downloaded that FPP v6.02 pi image, that zip folder. Uh, you're going to need to unzip it or extract it. Uh, on most Windows machine, if you right click, you should get an extract all option, which is going to give you a little pop up asking you where you want to save it to. Um, I've already extracted this, so I'm going to hit cancel. And it will extract out to a standard file folder, and inside of there is the disk image file. It is 3.8 gigabytes, so it's rather large. And we're going to select a target. Uh, at this point, you're going to want to insert the SD card into your computer if you have not already. And here is our SD card. We're going to select that. And when you're ready, click Flash. Uh, that is going to take anywhere from 2 minutes to 10 minutes, depending on your SD card and your computer and all other things combined. Uh, I already have one flashed and ready to go for the sake of speed. So once you get it flashed, you are going to want to insert the SD card into your Raspberry Pi and then power it up. After you apply power, give it 5-10 minutes to load up completely. Um, depending on the Pi that you have, it can take shorter, it can take longer. Pi 4s are pretty quick, Pi 0s are pretty slow. So, uh, don't be in a rush, but after a few minutes, um, on your phone or your computer, um, you're going to want to look for a Wi-Fi access point called FPP. Once that's available, you can connect to it. Uh, it should be password protected. The password is Christmas with a capital C. Um, put that password in and you should be connected to the FPP access point coming out of your Pi. So once you have that FPP access point, um, you're going to want to type 
open up a browser and type in 192.168.8.1. That is the default IP address. And you should be brought up to FPP initial setup. So we have FPP running on our Pi right now. Um, so let's get this set up quick. And host name, I'm going to add this is a Pi Zero, so I'm just going to add it zero after FPP. Host description, that would be some for your local network if you want a description for it. Uh, a lot of these just read what they're for, and they're pretty self explanatory. Uh, if you are not connected to the internet, uh, like on the FPP access point, you cannot set the time zone or locale quite yet. Um, we'll do that here in a separate step. However, in FPP6, setting the UI password and OS password are required. So for this, I'm just going to do disabled and default. Um, the UI password would be if you want a password to get into FPP. The OS password would be if you want to uh, connect directly, monitor hooked right up to your Pi with a keyboard and uh, be able to do some custom stuff. Really, you should never have to worry about that too much. Um, in the few years I've been doing this, I've never had a reason to actually hook up directly to FPP for anything. So we are going to click Finish Setup. And so there's a couple of things that I want to do before I reboot here. First thing I want to do is I want to expand the storage system to use the entire SD card. So I'm going to click that Expand Storage System. And then down here under SD card actions, grow file system. I'm going to click yes. So essentially now it's going to allow FPP to use the entire size of the SD card. Um, it's asking me to reboot. I'm not going to reboot quite yet because I want to do a couple other things. I'm going to go back to status control and status page. And I got another banner here that's saying, please consider enabling the collection of anonymous stats. I'm going to click enable stats. So that essentially is just going to send data to the FPP developers, help them uh, with features, enhancements, that kind of stuff. Let them know how it's being used so they can keep making it better and greater every day, every version. So next step is uh, I want to connect this to my local internet here. Um, so I'm going to go under FPP settings. And, oops, sorry, I'm going to go under FPP, or I'm going to go under status control and network. And so here are my interface settings. If you have a Raspberry Pi that has a Ethernet jack, uh, a lot of this you can probably skip and just direct and connect directly to it because you don't need a Wi-Fi access point if it's hardwired into your network. Um, but if you are not using the hardwire jack right off the bat, or you don't have one like on a Pi Zero, um, this would probably this would be the next step is to get it connected to your uh, either show network or your local network. So I am on WLAN zero, which is the default wireless uh, interface, and my wireless settings, my WPA SSID. Uh, if I click on that, it's got a few options here for local ones. I'm going to select the one in my office here. I'm going to put in my password. And I'm going to trust that I typed that right because I don't want to show everyone what my password is. And I'm going to click Update Interface. So now that should be saved in there. And at this point, I can reboot. So it's going to take a few minutes to reboot, uh, especially being on a Pi Zero, um, Pi 4s, Pi 3B Pluses, much faster, two minutes. These guys are a little longer. The next step is going to be finding the IP address that was assigned by your router. There's multiple ways to do that. Xlights has X scanner in it, um, where it'll essentially go through all the IPs uh, on your network and identify them. You can also go directly into your router settings um, to look for the uh, DHCP reservations. Um, we aren't going to go into static IPs at this point right now, but for getting going, DH DHCP will be just fine. And 
once you know the IP address of your device, uh, you can type that into the browser. I know this one's going to be 192.168.1.171. Sorry, dot two. Okay, and so once you get your IP address, type that into your browser, hit enter. And when your Pi is rebooted, you should be brought to this page. And congratulations, you now have Falcon Pi Player installed.